An escort mission is that bit in the game where you're tasked with escorting a helpless character from point A to point B without them dying or you eating your own hands in frustration. Because escort missions are famously annoying. Spare a thought, therefore, for the characters in games who had to look after your puny behind when, in a shocking twist, it turned out you were the thing that needed escorting. Here are the escort missions where it turned out that you were the fragile, precious baby. Where spoilers for the following games, you precious babies. Doom Guy from Doom is a demon's worst nightmare whose fearsome acts of savagery are etched into the history books of hell. But amid the legends of the Slayer and his brutal anti-demon crusade, you're not likely to find a description of the bit where the Slayer follows timidly behind a small robot dog, and yet that is exactly a thing that happens in Doom 3. Because you see, Mars City is littered with unactivated sentry bots, knee-high automatons who clatter around adorably on four metal legs, and before the demon invasion were presumably used by the United Aerospace Corporation to pick up litter, or maybe to overthrow entire nations judging by how much firepower each one is packing. Well, it would stop you littering. The sentry bot's job is to escort Doomguy through demon-infested corridors, and it even knows the way, which means all you have to do is hang back and not get killed by the hellions spawning all over the shop. This Ibo of Annihilation is so tough and deadly, the only sensible tactic is to conserve ammo and watch wide-eyed as this electronic dog of death clears corridor after corridor, even opening locked doors like the real MVP of Doom it undoubtedly is. Just try and be grateful and not think about how the sentry bot is currently playing a really boring and frustrating section of a video game where its objective is to guide a vulnerable Doom guy from point A to point B without the Doom guy dying. We promise not to get stuck on any scenery, sentry bot. But we promise to try. I can't see a thing. I'm blind as a bat without that flashlight on. Often in a game, an AI companion with a gun is purely for show. In the case of Alex Vance in the Half-Life series, it's purely for showing you how a real badass conducts themselves. Not only does Alex's pistol do proper damage, it never runs out of ammo, and Alex herself is more than capable of bullseyeing the headcrab zombies that populate the monster-ravaged remains of City 17. All this and a sense of humour make Alex perhaps the greatest AI companion in gaming history. The hell is that? Hmm. A combine zombie? That's... That's like a... Um, a zombine. Right? <laughs> zombine, get it? <laughs> okay. Wow, Gordon really left her hanging there. Awkward. It's a good thing that Alex is so gosh darn capable, because your safety is completely in her hands for a good section of the Half-Life 2 Episode 1 chapter, Low Life. Gordon and Alex must battle through the ruined city underground, which is filled with zombies and other interdimensional beasts, and an alarmingly small amount of ammo. Not that you start the mission with any conventional weapons, mind. But Gordon still has an important job to do, shining his flashlight on zombies so Alex can shoot them. Keep your light on that zombie! That's right, Alex's job here is to keep you alive, while yours is approximately that of a standing lamp. You just have to stay out of the way and try to make sure she has enough light to do her job of easily killing everything. Grenade! Seeing as your only role in this section of the game is to stay out of danger and keep your flashlight on, you'll feel double useless when you screw up both of these simple tasks. Gordon will even find himself occasionally trapped, giving Alex only limited time to save him before he dies, in what would be a really, really annoying escort mission if you were controlling Alex right now. That barnacle in your life. Don't worry Gordon, Alex will fix it. How about you focus on tasks that are more your speed, like turning this wheel? It won't turn itself. Good idea. 
putting that doctorate to good use at last. There's nothing worse than screwing up in front of your colleagues, like when I was asked to write this entry about Final Fantasy VII, and instead spent half an hour watching a video of Titus from Final Fantasy X's weird laugh. <laughs> I regret nothing. Suck it, colleagues. Aww. Final Fantasy VII's hero, Cloud, knows all too well what it's like to be shown up in front of his peers. In a flashback sequence, Cloud reveals not only that antagonist Sephiroth used to be a fellow member of Elite Military Force Soldier, but that Sephiroth is also a million times better than him. In a fight sequence against a massive green dragon, Sephiroth proves himself a heavy hitter, whilst Cloud goes down faster than you can say, Damn Cloud, how'd you get your hair so good? And as if that's not embarrassing enough, when the dragon tries to barbecue Sephiroth, your fellow soldier squaddy takes zero damage. You'd think with the amount of hairspray going on around here, everyone would be on fire by now. But the shameful flashback fights don't end there. Later on, you encounter a bunch of smaller beasts that look much flimsier and easier to kill. Surely this is my time to shine, you think? Well, think not, as you get your butt kicked yet again. No matter how many times Sephiroth revives you, you don't get any more useful. In the end, the only sensible thing to do is just lie face down on the floor and let Sephiroth run things for this entire section of the game which entails old Sephi protecting you as you wander from fight to impossible fight. Still, if you've got this fighting thing covered, Sephiroth and I can get back to watching Tidus. <laughs> ah, he's enjoying himself. Sub. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is, at its heart, a game about freedom and winning the love of random dogs. But mostly freedom! After all, once through the game's tutorial, you can strike out into the land of Hyrule in any direction you so please, and why not opt for the path that takes you straight into the desert, to the land of the Gerudo and the divine beast Vanna Boris, one of the vast machines built to battle evil by the ancient Sheikah people, who must have known that evil has a particular weakness to robot camels that shoot lightning. So wise, those Sheikahs. But getting close to Varnaboris is Varlaborius, on account of the deadly lightning storm it's generating. Luckily, the plucky Riju is willing to escort you in the right direction, using her lightning-diffusing helm to shield the area directly around her. You can probably see where this is going. Stick close to your protector and you can get close enough to your target to fire off bomb arrows at its feet, and bring Varnaboris to heal, so long as you don't mind swapping that precious freedom we talked about for a mission that requires staying scrupulously close to Riju, whimpering in fear every time you drift outside her circle of protection. Making this much, much harder is the fact that both you and Riju are tethered to sand seals, which are hard to drive, but seemingly don't mind veering so close to Varnaboris's lightning bolts, Presumably because, like all seals, they're surrounded by a thick layer of insulating rubber. That's blubber! Alright, genius, you explain how they get so close then. That's right, you can't. I win again. Where, where are you going, Andy? You, you're good to drive me home, right? anyone's favourite Disney prince. In fact, for me, he ranked six after one, Eric, two, Naveen, three, Flynn. Jane, this could go on. Charming Aladdin beast. But what we can all agree on is that in a combat situation, it's the beast who you'd want to have your back because he looks like a grizzly bear on protein powder. This is just as well as there's a point in Kingdom Hearts where hero Sora has his iconic keyblade taken away at the entrance to Hollow Bastion by the nefarious Riku who also robs poor Sora of longtime companions Donald and Goofy. Sora, Sorry. 
Now, all Sora is armed with is a crappy wooden sword, which is as effective as you'd expect against the Heartless. A terrible situation, or it would be, except Beast the Beast is there, who has claws and fangs and is generally an absolute, well, beast. See ya! Ha! Huh, that's probably why he's called that. Even Sora's magic attacks are nothing compared to a swipe of the beast's paws, so you basically spend this part of the game trying to stay as close to his big fuzzy back as possible and not get killed. But oh no, how are we going to open entrances now that we don't have our faithful Keyblade? Yeah, that'll do it. Fortunately, upon being separated from Beast and bumping back into Riku, Donald and Goofy, your traitorous Disney pals, have a change of heart and come back to your side. And so you win back to Keyblade, because friendship? My friends are my power. <laughs> but be aware, Donald and Goofy, this has impacted your place in my ranking of favourite Disney characters. You now jointly place 32nd. That's one after the animatronic from It's a Small World, which is a cactus wearing a cowboy hat. I wasn't expecting to see you two here. We thought you could use our help. So, Witcher, this is no time to explain. Where is Renna? Expect to answer a lot of questions inside. Let us go then. Witches are pretty tough. They have to be to survive what random jerks yell at them in the street. Out. So you wouldn't imagine a tough old witcher like Geralt of Rivia would need much assistance, not when he's got two swords and a rolodex of offensive magic spells. <laughs> However, our strong witchy boy does find himself somewhat outnumbered in the Witcher 3 DLC quest Capture the Castle, which sees the grey-haired monster mangler attempting to storm a fortification called Duntine to rescue the Duchess of Toussaint's sister. Only problem is, the castle has a whole army of bandits at its disposal, possibly too many for even Geralt to dispose of. Luckily, Geralt has many combat tactics he can deploy, like potions, special oils that enhance his blades, and being best friends with a cool vampire. One called Regis, specifically, who shows up to help and brings along his mate Detlaf, both of whom are higher vampires and as such hold the mythical status known as basically unkillable, which is handy for the next bit of quest, in which Geralt must make his way to the keep. <laughs> Except, holy wow, it quickly becomes apparent that Geralt is something of a third wheel here, and needs to do little more than walk slowly and quietly up to the objective marker while Regis and Detlaf mince the dozens of heavily armed bandits like two undead Nutribullets. Regis and Detlaf. Where were you two when I was getting called names in the street? Behind you! Imagine it's after the fall of civilization and it's your job to look after the one person who could hold the cure to the pandemic that caused it all. What are your top priorities? Food? Shelter? Not being impaled on a large spike. Damn it, Joel, what did I just say? In The Last of Us, you play extremely capable Joel. Capable, that is, until you and Ellie get to the university and get into a scuffle. The resulting injury means that even after you're no longer impaled, Joel's movement is understandably slow going. Once capable strides are now replaced with stumbles as Joel has to drag himself along while Ellie assists him. So now, instead of protecting Ellie, the magical cure carrier, it's up to her to protect you. Ellie checks hallways, clears routes, and helps murderize baddies before they can murderize you. Whenever you fall, she's the one that picks you up, and that includes motivational chat. Here, lean on me. No. Well, can you walk? Yes. Then f walk! Language, young lady. But also, yes, good point. Let's get out of here. Despite the stress-induced potty mouth, Ellie shows herself to be very capable, saving your helpless butt multiple times. In fact, Ellie does so well in this reverse escort mission, the game decides to make her the playable character for the next bit of the game. Brilliant. Now, job one, Ellie, and this is important, find Joel a new plaid shirt. The other one's all blood on it. I swear to God, 
I get you out of this. You're so singing for me. <laughs> you wish. So those were the escort missions where, guess what? You were the thing that had to be moved from the thing. That's right, and I bet you wandered off. And I bet you got stuck on the scenery, and I bet you got trapped in time-sensitive ways where the AI thing had to come save you. So, well, you know, not that easy. A little bit of, little bit of role reversal. I think we can all appreciate that escort missions are actually good. No, I've gone too far there. They're still bad. But we learned something, right? Can you think of any other missions uh, where it turns out that you are the thing that needs escorting? If so, pop them in the comments. Um, so that everyone can enjoy them. And hey, if you enjoyed this, then there is a very, very strong chance that you'll also enjoy the weekly community show we do. It is called Show of the Weekend, and it's awesome. Uh, and it's awesome, we sit on the sofa, and we talk about games, and it's really fun, and really chill, and I hope you like it. And outside Xbox, do one as well. It's called Show of the Week, and that is just down here. And they are both great, and you will enjoy them. And again, if you liked this, why not subscribe? All right, take it easy, guys. Bye.